Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I am going to try and make this quick because I am literally, I'm racing daylight right now. It's 3.50 and sunset is at 4.28. Oh my gosh, that's so soon. Can I do that? Half an hour. Okay, 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 we can do it. Anyway, welcome back to the discussion of plants that I have imported or that have been imported that I am currently growing in ambient conditions. Um, in part one, I talked about eight philodendrons that I am growing, and in this video, we're gonna talk about eight anthuriums, and quickly. Before we get into it, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, so I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about them, and then we will get started. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes that you can take at your own pace and on your own time. I can say from personal experience that it's been such a valuable resource for me since starting my business and even more so now that I've become so immersed in the plant community. Not only have I learned how to edit my plant photos in a way that makes it feel unique to me, I also know how to use Final Cut Pro now so that I can make these videos for you guys a lot easier on a weekly basis. The holidays are approaching quickly and I knew that I wanted to do something really special for a few people in my life, but wasn't sure what that would be exactly. After days of searching online, I randomly decided to see if Skillshare might have something I could work with. I literally typed in the word gift and one of the first few searches that came up were origami and paper art related. I was instantly reminded of a paper plant I saw on Instagram a few weeks back and I honestly thought it was real and so I just knew in that moment. That's that's what I was going to do. So I found a course called How to Make a Miniature Monstera Plant by Danny Vinokurov which was really helpful in laying down the groundwork and then I got to work. I'm gonna be honest, going into this, I was pretty stressed out. I really had been pushing it off for as long as possible because one, I haven't done arts and crafts for a really long time and I just felt like this attempt was gonna be a total bust. But once I got started and got into the rhythm of it, I just remembered how much I loved arts and crafts and doing really crafty things with my hands. And I ended up making more than one, I actually made three when I was sitting down doing this and it was like the most fun that I've had in a really really long time. Some of the paper plants on Instagram were so cute and I could tell that the creators had put a lot of their own sort of personal touch and personal style into making them and as much as I loved it I just felt like I needed to do something that was more on brand with me and something that I felt comfortable making. So I decided to just start scouring my Instagram and trying to find the perfect plant that I wanted to make. So I came across my Anthurium Crystallinum Black. If you guys have been on this channel, you know that I just have this affinity for crystallinums that I, I just can't explain. So I started looking at some of my Anthurium Crystal Black photos that I posted in the past and found some of my favorite leaves. And because I wanted to make it a little bit more realistic, I knew I needed an emergent leaf. So I got Alice's permission and used a photo of her emergent leaf, which was so cute and I felt like it was the perfect touch. It was actually a lot easier to make this than I thought with proper planning and I just, again, I had so much fun and I think that it turned out really well actually. It turned out better than I gave myself credit for in my mind and I'm just hooked. I want to make every kind of paper plant. Everyone is getting a paper plant for Christmas. I don't care if you don't like plants, you're getting a paper plant. So if you've been wanting to brush up on a skill you already have or maybe pick up a new one, or maybe you just need Christmas gift ideas like I did, now is the perfect time to join Skillshare and the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial. Oh my gosh, it's so dark out here already, but we're gonna make it through. So the first plant up is my Anthurium Dark Phoenix and this one is one of my beloveds. We actually, before we talk about all these Anthuriums, I'm just gonna say this off the bat so I don't have to keep repeating myself. Um, if you're new to this channel or if you don't watch all of my videos, which is totally fine. I, what was it, maybe six, six or eight months ago now, I transitioned every single one of my anthuriums out to an anthurium shelf in my plant room. So they're all living in ambient humidity. A lot of them really did not react well to it. As I kind of suspected, I just didn't know the severity of 
how much they would have thrown a fit. Some of them have gone all the way back down to stumps. And then the other half that still remains got attacked by spider mites or thrips or both. You know, the Dark Phoenix was definitely one of them. So you'll see a lot of my Ethereums have a lot of cosmetic damage. They look like they have been through a shredder, some of them. But you know, we're still we're still sort of getting into the swing of things. And if you kind of want an update about the plant shelf, I have I think two videos on my channel right now. One is the installation of the shelves, I think. And then the second one is um, an update on how the plants are doing. So give those a watch and then come back if you want a little bit of a backstory on some of these anthuriums. But anyway, um, the anthurium dark phoenix, it was, it was eaten alive. It really was. I thought that, you know, this was going to never bounce back for me. When it was down to a stump, I was very, very sad and I was heartbroken and I felt, I don't know, guilty a little bit, I felt like a failure, um, you know, just sort of all the normal things that you feel sometimes when you beat yourself up too much about a plant. But she came back for me better than ever and this is probably the largest leaf I've ever had on it, which is so encouraging for me, especially knowing that it grew outside of a greenhouse and knowing that it did it despite having spider mites and thrips. Alice recently transitioned this plant from me from soil into pond and I gotta tell you I was a little bit nervous but Alice said dark phoenixes love pond and um, she's way better at anthuriums than me and I would say even more knowledgeable about anthuriums than I am and she wasn't wrong because it took so well to that transition, did not skip a beat didn't rot any of those soil roots and is just pushing out the fuzziest, most wonderful, delicious roots ever. So I am so grateful for a successful transition. I'm so happy I finally <laughs> am gonna be growing this Dark Phoenix out of soil because it really was not doing the best in soil and I am trying to grow pretty much a majority of my anthuriums in Lechuza Pond. So um, yeah, we're not doing too bad and this one, uh, when I received this plant, it, the largest leaf was actually smaller than this. So we're kind of getting somewhere. Got a little bit of a, a ding here from emerging from the caterpillar, but otherwise I'm just thrilled that she's alive. I'm thrilled she made a comeback and I am freaking so proud of her. She's doing well in pond. Okay, next one up is my Anthurium Hoffmanii X and uh, Let's see, let's go back to, let's go back to the beginning. So this is obviously not the import leaf. I've had this plant for quite some time now, but um, it really truly does look like a caterpillar got to it. And I wouldn't doubt if there was a caterpillar in there. Something happened. And you know what's funny is I don't remember picking at this. Alice, did you do this? This is a product of, again, the climatization, just, growing out in ambient humidity, being attacked by pests. But all of my leaves were about this big for the longest time. My import leaf was much smaller than this. And then we had this one. Um, and then this massive monster popped out. But this one, I think is gonna be even, I think this one is gonna be even bigger than this one because this emergent leaf, well, the way I can tell is because this petiole is already super thick for the stage that it's at, and this petiole is thicker than this one is already. Um, and the leaf for just sort of fully emer emerging out of the fruit roll-up phase is so much larger than my normal anthurium leaves are. I think this one is definitely, I wanna say pretty fully acclimatized to the lower humidity. I did not have to help this one out of the caterpillar at all with spraying or using anything to like sort of get it out of there. But this one I think is starting to repel water. It dries out so fast and the way that you can tell like a plant has become hydrophobic is like if you water it and it just goes straight down like really fast and it's not sort of like slow draining down to the bottom, that means that water is not being absorbed anymore. And I wonder, I think I could give you guys a demonstration really quick. Let's do that. Not that I have time for demonstrations. The sun is about to go away, but good teaching opportunity. So I've got some water here and I'm just gonna water it. 
and a lot of that water actually moved down into the vessel way faster than it normally would if I had super super healthy soil if you look at where I watered it's like actually still really dry and everything has just sort of like gone down to the bottom super fast so that's a sign for me that I know that I need to like get new soil in there or at least aerate it a little bit can I not <laughs> and usually I do that by just getting a chopstick and poking holes in the soil so that some of that water can go through the soil and then out and not just sort of run over the sides um, but anyway that's we're, we're veering off the topic and that is no one's fault but mine but anywho, um, yeah, Anthurium Hoffmanni IX finally starting to do something productive outside of a greenhouse. Sorry, I'm having a hard time talking. Um, I lose my voice very easily, so if I film more than one video a day, then it's just... I literally had to make tea, honey tea, because my voice is, is shot. And we still have <clears throat> four more plants, but we're gonna, we're gonna blast through them. Wait, I'm hecka dumb. We have five more plants, not four. Next plant on the list, I had to include my Vitarifolium. This was the first imported anthurium that I have ever attempted to grow outside of a greenhouse and no regrets. I mean, my original plant definitely doesn't look as majestic as it did when I first received it, but you know, I like that I can at least enjoy it now. Um, it has given me some growth, maybe not as much, but um, growth <laughs> regardless. This one has been a little bit faster growing than my bigger one. I don't think you can see it. I have it there now where my micans used to be, but this is my newer Vitarifolium that I started growing in a greenhouse and then um, it quickly outgrew that. It was in my smaller EXO. This is a leaf that has grown outside of a greenhouse. So. Clearly, you can still get the long, nice, strappy boys that don't look all um, nasty and deformed, even if you're not growing it in sort of higher, you know, higher temperatures, higher humidity. Um, this is the newest leaf to come out on it, which I believe had the potential to be really, really long and beautiful. I love how this Vitarifolium has been giving me the like most narrow, long leaves, but again, we had a bit of a thrips issue right here we had a swarm of thrips in this little crevice here just completely mangled it um stunted the growth and uh, it hasn't really done much since this but i'm not worried this plant has been super hardy super resilient i wouldn't say that it's like an easy anthurium to grow in ambient conditions um, especially if you have a very very dry home like i do it's normally like 30-40% out here, which is why my skin is always so freaking dry. But, you know, it just requires a little bit more of a watchful eye. So, uh, if you have a Vitarifolium and it's outgrowing your greenhouse space, as it will once it starts getting really, really big and strappy, um, don't be scared to bring it out of a greenhouse. I would just keep an eye on those emergent leaves because they do have a tendency to get stuck in the catafil. But a little spray or even just using a little squeeze bottle to kind of keep that catafil area really like lubricated <laughs> uh, helps a lot. It's just again with my schedule and how thin I'm spread between my plants, I don't really have the luxury that I used to um, to be able to sort of helicopter over my plants but i would much rather have less than perfect leaves but be able to enjoy them and have them outside of a greenhouse so yeah this one's actually in a tree fern fiber pond mix and it is doing amazing got some nice green photosynthesized roots there and yeah she's she's happy she just had a little bit of a pest issue but we're getting that sorted this is my anthurium equidurens and um, I can't remember when Alice would have imported this, but this was a cutting from her plant and I used to have one, I sold it, kind of immediately regretted it and now I am not gonna make the same mistake. So I actually find this one to be a very fast growing anthurium um, if you don't let it dry out. 
and it's really really starting to reward me with some beautiful leaves even in super super low humidity but um yeah again had some thrips had spider mites but she's been really really good and these leaves are starting to look so delicious and and yummy and I like that, you know, I finally have like a like a long leaf philodendron that isn't a giant pain in my butt. It's been really, really low maintenance. She doesn't require much. I mean, I know that she's not like the queen. She's not she's not a Broquianum, she's not an Esmeralda, she's not she's not any of those things, but she's a cutie, she's low maintenance, and if you're looking for an Ethereum that you can kind of just pop on a shelf and call it a day. Um, you might want to consider her. This one, I would pull it out of here, but it's a little bit jam-packed in there. Yeah, I'm not going to attempt it. It's in a clear vessel inside of this cover pot, but it is growing in no drainage. It's in soil. I have a little lazy pull strap around the stem because it was growing pretty tall and I didn't want to repot it and I just wanted to fill more soil. Erin actually has a pretty large one in her greenhouse and I think the leaf is like this big and even though it's not velvety and it's just like a glossy leaf, especially the emergent leaves, they feel so nice to touch. They're just, oh, they're so magical. Here's one that you've seen, I would say pretty recently. I think I repotted this one on camera. This is my um, Anthurium Pappy Hybrid from Indonesia. Um, it was a pretty small plant when I imported it. All of the leaves were about this small. Yeah, it's just now really starting to uh, size up. This one would have been the largest leaf on it if it <laughs> hadn't completely just melted. Um, this was uh, the second, I believe the second leaf to emerge in the plant room out of a greenhouse in those arid conditions and this would be the third so you know we're sort of getting somewhere we still have a bit of cosmetic damages which i really honestly if if all of my ethereums had these little nicks and things on them i would not care at all i would actually be so happy it's just this phase right here this is the this is the phase that drove me crazy and I, I think we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, honestly. You'll see the next plant that I'm gonna show you is, you know, it's a little it's a little munched up like this, but um, I, I feel like the winter will be a lot easier for us because the temperatures will drop even more in there. It was so hot in the summer. Um, I think this one kind of emerged at the tail end of summer, which may have contributed to why it is actually a fully formed leaf. You know, I'm just really glad that it's showing signs of life and that it is showing me that it will grow outside of a greenhouse. Did need a little bit of assistance though. I have an architrellis on it to sort of keep this leaf up. This one is in no drainage, in soil, and I know that I said that I wanted to get pretty much all of my anthuriums into pond, but there are some plants that I have, like the Hoff X that's in soil, like my King of Spades, that have been doing pretty okay. That I don't feel, I don't feel like it's necessary to transition them and risk the shock. But uh, this is one that I could potentially get into pond. But after seeing this leaf, I feel like I'm just gonna leave it and see how it goes. But otherwise, um, it's really just it's shaping up into a really really beautiful plant. Let's just hope that we can keep this up because this is definitely one of my favorite hybrids in my collection. Second to last one is my Anthurium crystalline black, one of my favorite Anthuriums in my collection. If you guys know me well, you know that I love crystallinums. They were one of the first Anthuriums I ever owned. Um, it was one of the first Anthuriums I ever imported myself, acclimatized for the first time, and they've just been they've been really good to me. And I just I have like this soft spot for them. So when I discovered that the Anthurium crystallinum black existed, I uh, audibly gasped and may have passed away a little bit but she, she's had a long road. We definitely hit a few bumps um, along the way, but I feel like we're kind of, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know where we're going, but she's had, she's had a rough go, but she's not looking too, not looking too shabby. So the newest leaf got like munched a bit because 
someone may have forgotten to water it for like three weeks. I'm not gonna drop any names. But you know, despite being completely dried out, um, these roots are like fantabulous and I don't see any rotted roots except for that one. Oh um, no. Yeah, this one is a fun guy. The end. It lost a lot of leaves during, I need to figure out a name for the time when my thrips and spider mite outbreak was the worst on my shelf. I'll think of a name, but during that time, he did not enjoy it. Um, he dropped about four leaves like at once. I thought that it was root rot, so I plucked it out and disturbed it and it threw even more of a fit. The reason that I plucked it out was because there was so much algae on the side of the vessel that I couldn't see. So yeah, that was my only option, but it wasn't rot. It was just the fact that it had been, you know, attacked by so many pests and just was, I guess, still stressed out from being grown inside of an enclosed greenhouse to now living in 30% humidity. And I think that I put my shelf up in February. So it was still cool. And I, I remember that for the first like month or month and a half, it was like smooth sailing. I was like, oh, this is easy. Amanda's right, it's, it's a breeze. And then the weather started heating up a little bit. And then it's like we just rode a train to hell together. But now that it's cooling down, a lot of my anthuriums are really enjoying it. And I'm always trying to find ways to keep things cool in there. But because of all the light, it's kind of impossible to, you know, have it go below a certain temperature. Even though some people don't believe that lights create warmth. Again, not dropping any names. You know, we're, we're making do with what we have. I've already switched from my really, really warm Monios and Domia lights to these um, Barina ones that are much cooler than those two. Uh, I've gotten rid of my Mars Hydro light, which was as hot and bright as the sun, which is so great if you're growing like marijuana or something. But um, my Anthuriums did not enjoy it at all to be fully transparent and honest with you guys. They did not like that Mars Hydro light at all. It was just too hot. So I think this one should be, I don't know, hopefully on the up and up during, you know, this winter and it's still in the plant room. So I do still expect some growth on this. I'm actually not growing any of these anthuriums on the shelf. All of my anthuriums are grown in the plant room. Um, maybe one day I will transition the anthurium shelf to out here, but that's that's a problem for another day me. I think I'm gonna keep this guy in the background because he's so fun. He's one of my favorites. Last but not least is my beloved Anthurium King of Spades. This is um, probably one of the most exciting imports that I've had. I did not know that this hybrid existed back when we got it. I can't even remember when we got it. It would have been maybe in 20, was it 2020, like the end of 2020 or the beginning of 2021? I don't remember anymore. I should make a little list. Uh, it was a little bit more pricey and I was worried that I would be burning money again as I have done in the past. But honestly, this this plant has been so good in, in a greenhouse and out of a greenhouse. Um, we did have a little bit of trouble coming out of the catafil a few times but that's because I'm just, again, I've not been the most attentive plant parent. When you let anthuriums dry out completely, they will show you that they're unhappy, so just don't do it. And again, like a broken record with the, with the pests. But despite all of that, you know, it's just been the cutest, most adorable little thing. And I'm obsessed with how dark and beautiful these leaves are. The venation is incredible. The hybrids that are coming out that are crossed with this plant are just mind blowing. They're just absolutely mind blowing. And I would love to have anything crossed with this plant because if those hybrids are anywhere close to as sort of hardy as this plant is, sign me up because I am not the best <laughs> with anthuriums. I've had people request that I do an anthurium care video and I just won't do it because I am not confident in my abilities with anthuriums yet. I don't feel like I am the best example 
to be following when it comes to Ethereums. I feel like there's so many more people out there that have better advice to offer more experience under their belt. I'm just really doing the bare minimum, you guys. But not too bad with this one. Um, she's been really, really good to me. So if you've been thinking about buying this plant, I know they can be kind of costly still, but to me, it is absolutely worth every penny because she's just gorgeous. Like, look at these abaxials too. And like, there is no comparison to the way this feels. It's so thick and just like, you know, I have cute aggression with it. So yeah, this one's in soil with drainage holes, but it is in a cover pot, so it's basically like it doesn't have drainage holes. But another plant that has been so good to me despite living outside of a greenhouse and we're hoping we're hoping for some bigger leaves because all of the leaves have been kind of you know decent size but haven't noticed a huge jump in size just yet i don't know if you guys could tell how much i struggled through that video but i am really really losing my voice i leave for california in a couple weeks so it's just been like a film a filming marathon and my body is definitely taking a toll. I'm not even a Christmas person, but I just really want to go home and see my niece and nephew. I miss them so much. So anyway, that is going to wrap it up. Those were eight imported Ethereums that are living in um, ambient conditions. I feel like maybe this video might be a good place to reference maybe in six months or a year to show you guys how these plants are doing. I love them all very much and I don't ever plan to get rid of any of them ever. Yeah, maybe I'll give you like a six month update and hopefully we've got some bigger leaves. Hopefully we have leaves that aren't munched on, but you know, honestly, I am just grateful for growth, not setting my expectations too high. I'm still really learning um, how to grow anthuriums in general and then grow them in pretty harsh conditions in my plant room. We're learning, we're learning together. So anywho, thank you guys for stopping by again. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it helps us a lot on YouTube. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for being here and I will see you in the next one.